You might have heard of the Ig Nobel Prizes before. They're kind of like um, the, the Razzies, yeah. but for scientists. Yeah, okay. Basically, science with a sense of humour. Yeah, like what scientists do on their day off. Yeah. I suppose. Yeah. There are some brilliant Ig Nobel Prizes that have been given out before. Uh, 1996 Physics Prize was given to Robert Matthews, who had a look at why toast often falls butter side down. <laughs> Important work. Yes. Um, and in 2009, a group uh, got the Ig Nobel Prize for inventing a bra that can double up as two gas masks. Uh, 2005, a uh, prize for fluid dynamics was given to a group of scientists who analysed the pressures produced when penguins poo. If, if you want to look it up, it's called um, avian defecation. Calculations on avian defecation. Insightful work. There we go. Um, <laughs> but rather than wait until the next year's worth of nominations, Greg and I wanted to share with you some of our favourite examples of silly science. Yeah, those ones that the Ig Nobles have overlooked. So these are our top four. Right, so I'm first, and I found this in the Journal of Pain. <laughs> you knew there was such a thing. Nice. Uh, volume 12, number 12, December 2011, if you do want to look mm -hmm. it up. Which I will. The, the title of the paper is Swearing as a Response to Pain, Effect of Daily Swearing Frequency. They took an ice bucket, really cold load of water, mm -hmm. they made one group of people stick their hand in and see how long they could deal with the pain, and they didn't swear, versus a group who did swear. And did it work? Yeah, there are like graphs and everything in this paper. Yeah, they found that if you swore, some people lasted up to 40 seconds longer wow. dealing with the pain. Okay. They think it's um, kicking off a fight or flight response. So that anger, that aggression that you feel when you swear, mm -hmm kind of acts as a natural painkiller. Wow, all right. So maybe not quite as silly as it originally appears then. No. They also had a look at um, if you swear all the time, mm -hmm. so if you're like dropping cusses every day, mm -hmm. does it have more or less of an effect? And they found that the more you swear, the less the effect is. So the less good it is as a, as a pain relief. A reason not to swear all the time then. Yeah, I guess so. So that would be our advice, <laughs> right? Take home. <laughs> yeah, don't swear all the time because when you do stub your toe or like hit your funny bone, you are totally going to need to drop an yeah, F-bomb because then it it's does totally help. Fine. Then it's totally fine. So my paper, one of the best things I've ever read. Uh, its title is Pigeons Can Discriminate Good and Bad Paintings by Children. They peck when they see a good painting. A proper appreciation of art by pigeons. How there. does a pigeon know what's a good painting or a bad painting? So they train them. So they had a series of paintings by children. A teacher put them into good and bad piles. They trained the pigeon on some of them and then would show them new pictures to see if the pigeons could tell whether they were good or bad. Got it. So rather than like Pavlov's dog, it's kind of Picasso's pigeon? <laughs> Basically though, the study showed that the pigeons could distinguish between what was a good painting and a bad painting, which is really interesting, right? Because it's something that computers, despite their unbelievable capabilities, find really difficult to do. Hmm. But, uh, but the old humble pigeon can. Yes. Uh, what did they like? Uh, they liked structure, uh, they liked aesthetically pleasing images, you know, the general things that art lovers go for. Okay. Uh, maybe I'm going to get a pigeon to kind of filter down my Instagram feed. My second one does not have an immediately attractive title. Okay. All right. Sildenafil accelerates reentrainment of circadian rhythms after advancing light schedules. Obviously. But when you realise that the reentrainment of circadian rhythms after advancing light schedules mm -hmm. means getting over jet lag. Right. And when you realise that Sildenafil is essentially Viagra. Right. What they're saying is that taking Viagra can help you get over jet lag. Amazing. If you're a hamster. <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah, this was done on hamsters. <laughs> right. They, they put them in cages, they regulated their light-dark mm -hmm. schedule, they gave some of them a very small dose of Viagra, like 70 micrograms, not much at all, and then they suddenly turned the lights on, mm -hmm. and it was like taking them from New York to Paris, okay. like a time zone jump. And they found that those that had had the Viagra recovered 50% quicker to that equivalent six hour jump in time zone. Okay, but how can you tell if the hamster's feeling a bit groggy in the morning? Uh, activity, essentially. Okay, so right. it's like compare that to those that don't have jelly. Mm, that's interesting, because I have heard before that uh, you can give Viagra to really premature babies to help them with their blood flow around their body. There are other uses essentially for Viagra. Oh. What they reckon is that it, um, it affects a small chemical called CGMP mm -hmm. that kind of moderates your internal body clock. So I think it speeds up your internal body clock and helps you get over that jet lag quicker. So my final paper, um, which I love because it's a math paper. Of course. It's called Pendulum Models of Ponytail Motion During Walking and Running. 
There's a paper on that. <laughs> yeah, of course. It's really important to know what happens to a ponytail when of you're running, right? But this paper, I love it because it goes into the most insane level of detail. There's like 20 pages here what? of all of the different versions. So they include uh, what happens when your head just moves up and down as you're running. Okay. Um, or, or if you do like a figure of eight with your head, or even if you're going really fast and your head like makes a bit of a U shape. What happens to your ponytail when that happens? Why? <laughs> well, okay, well, sometimes it's just interesting to see how far you can go with a single idea, right? Yeah. And it turns out they go f they go pretty far. <laughs> right. <laughs> so they even uh, create like a, a metal version of a ponytail with sort of lots of bends in it and, and try and run experiments to see if it can match their models. Because that's so like hair. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, well, it's close to hair. Is there any point in that? Well, okay, but pendulums are quite interesting, right? There's a Foucault's pendulum, which can show the rotation of the earth. Yeah. Um, and also, they make very nice, you know, physics question problems. For A levels. Yeah, students. for A levels. No, but students. is there any point of this paper? Um, uh, no. No, but no, there isn't any point. <laughs> so there you have it. That's our top four silly science papers. Uh, yeah, but top four for now because yes. uh, there are literally hundreds of these. So many. <laughs> yes. Uh, in fact, if you know of any, then put them in the comments down below this video. Uh, we will check them out and we yeah. do read all the yeah, comments. Yeah, we do. Tell us your examples of science with a sense of humour. Yeah. Uh, and subscribe if you haven't. If you have, nice one. Thank you very much. Uh, if you haven't, there's going to be loads more videos coming out. So make sure you do hit subscribe.